The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amy Double Pignatori, Dean of Admissions and College Registrar. On behalf of BC3 and our panelists, I'd like to welcome you to our virtual nursing information session. We are excited to announce that you can now apply to BC3 for free today and tomorrow at bc3.edu apply. You will want to enter the waiver code BC3 bound 2021. That's BC3 bound 2021 for the free waiver code. Our agenda for tonight's information session is as follows. We will be sharing some BC3 information with you, the admissions requirements about what does a selective program mean, how competitive is it, the science requirements, what placement testing is required, and the timeline. And then we'll also go a little more detail about the RN program requirements. We've provided some materials for today's virtual nursing information session that's currently available under the handout portion of the control panel, which includes the fall 2021 BC3 enrollment guide, the BC3 scholarship flyer, our Concordia and BC3 tuition sponsorship flyer, nursing and healthcare science curriculum planners, and an estimated nursing cost for 2021. You also have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's panelists by typing your questions into the questions pane of the attendee control panel. You may type in and send your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Before we hear from our per first presenter, we'd like to ask our audience a question. How would you describe your current educational experience? Please select one. Current high school student, high school graduate with no or some college credit, current BC3 or college student, bachelor's degree or higher in another field, or a licensed practical nurse. Please select the appropriate response and click submit. Once everyone has had a chance to respond, we will close the poll. We are We are now closing the poll. All right, to share the uh, results of this poll, looks like 62% are current high school students. Uh, about 14 and 19% are high school graduate with some college or a current BC3 student, and it looks like about 5% are practical nursing nurses. I would like to now introduce our first presenter, Ms. Morgan Rizzardi, our Associate Director of Admissions. Take it away, Morgan. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you again for spending some time with us to learn more about BC3's uh, Nursing RN program. As Amy mentioned, my name is Morgan Rosardi, and I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at the college, and I do work very closely with the nursing application process, so I'm happy to share some information with you this evening about the admissions side of the nursing program. So we'll go ahead and get started with just some information about BC3. 
Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the campus, it is a beautiful facility here at the main campus in Butler, as well as our BC3 at Brockway location uh, in Jefferson County. So we definitely encourage you uh, to schedule a time to come visit one of our campus locations. Uh, but BC3 actually opened its doors in September of 1966. Um, our nursing program, however, began in 1972. So as you can see, there was very few years in which BC3 did not have a nursing program. And we continue to grow that program and are excited for some of the forthcoming opportunities for our students. We do enroll approximately 3,000 3, credit students um, today at our five locations, uh, one instructional site, as well as students that take coursework online. Uh, we do have 55 associate degree programs here at the college and 23 certificate programs. But of those, four are considered selective in nature, with nursing being uh, one of them. We also do have a physical therapist assistant program, a medical assistant program, and a massage therapy program that are selective in nature. So there are certain requirements a student must meet in order for them to be admitted to those programs. Uh, we are sponsored by Butler County, so tuition rates do vary by county of residence. So even though we have locations in other counties outside of Butler County, uh, we do have a, a different tuition rate depending on where students reside. So these are the tentative tuition rates, just to give you an idea uh, for the upcoming academic year, which is 21-22. Uh, $175 per credit for those that reside inside Butler County and $280 per credit for those reside in, that reside in other counties outside of Butler County. Uh, in the handouts portion, again, there is a estimated cost sheet uh, for the nursing program. So if you wanted to get a little deeper into some of the costs, this is just tuition and fees only. Uh, so there are some other costs that you will have to consider to attend our nursing program. But overall, BC3 is known for its affordability and its value. Uh, so in higher education today, definitely one of the uh, uh, institutions that will provide you the best um, tuition rate here at BC3. So just a quick overview about some of the program attributes for our nursing program. When students graduate from BC3, they do achieve an associate in applied science degree. They do have to take the state board examinations at the conclusion of their time here at BC3 to be a registered nurse in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, so when students are walking across our stage, they're not RNs just yet, but many of our students do take that state board examination shortly thereafter and become registered nurses in our and go, go to work in various different locations. Our nursing program is approved by the PA State Board of Nursing, and we are also accredited by the Accreditation Commission for Education and Nursing, also known as ASEN. So we take great pride in these accreditations in addition to our Middle States accreditation, which is a college-wide accreditation. So our credits are recognized and transferable to various different locations, and so all of the rigor that goes into these accreditations uh, does mean that our program is highly valuable and sought after. We do have consistently high RN pass rates, as mentioned. I will say the number on the screen is not reflective of all of the years, uh, but with uh, 2020 that we've all been living through uh, this pandemic, you can see that our uh, pass rates for RNs, first time test takers, is 87.10%. And so normally we hover a little bit closer to 90 to 93% first time pass rate. This information is on the PA State Board of Nursing's website. Uh, so if you do want to look at other colleges and universities and see how we compare, that information is out there for you. This is probably the most common path to students becoming a registered nurse. Uh, about 60% of all new nurses receive their associate degree first and 79% actually received it at a community college. So there's currently 14 community colleges across the state of Pennsylvania. We all have nursing programs and are known for our nursing programs. So this is a popular avenue for a lot of students to take. However, there are other ways to become a nurse. Um, we do see some students that go to bachelor's degree institutions and go for all four years um, at the same school. Uh, there are hospital-based nursing programs in our local service area that some students choose to go to. But when I speak to students about our nursing program and what makes us unique, 
is the fact that students do get that associate degree and they're able and eligible to work. So they are able to go into the hospitals, into nursing homes and other healthcare uh, facilities and work. And a lot of them do that and work on their next level of education while, while they're there. So that's what I think makes our program unique in comparison to some of the other options. So as I mentioned previously, um, there are selective admissions programs at BC3. So generally, BC3 is an open admissions institution. So as long as a student has a high school diploma or the equivalent of a high school diploma in the form of a GED or high set scores, they are welcome to attend a community college. But the nursing program has a few other things that we have to consider in the admissions process. And you can see some of that criteria listed here. The first being that we do require students to have a minimum GPA of a 2.8 or better. And we'll talk a little bit further in the presentation about how we calculate GPA, but that is what we're looking for in our applicant pool. We also have very specific science requirements, and we have a slide further in the presentation that talk, talks a little bit more about that too. Another thing that kind of makes our program unique in comparison to others in our local service area is that we do not require letters of recommendation. So when students submit those letters of recommendation to us, it is not a consideration in their admission to the program. I may read them, but there are no points uh, affiliated with those letters. We also do not require interviews, and we do not have specialized additional testing for nursing students. Uh, some folks have probably heard of the NLN or the TEAS test, which is a pre-admissions test specifically for nursing students. So that is not something that we do here at BC3. So a lot of what we look at is, is what we'll talk about in this presentation. Okay, before Morgan uh, goes on, we have another question for our audience. Where do you intend to take the majority of your BC3 classes? Please select one. The main campus, BC3 at Brockway, another BC3 location, or online? Please select the appropriate responses and click Submit. Once everyone has had a chance to respond, we'll close the poll. I am now closing the poll and going to share the results. Okay, it looks like the majority of the, the folks that are in our audience tonight plan to attend the main campus, about 64%, 23% uh, at Brockway, 9% at another location, and 5% online. Now I'll turn the presentation back over to Morgan. Thanks, Amy. That's always good information to have, just to know the audience that we're speaking to tonight and where they intend to take their courses. So as I mentioned, we do require specific lab science courses to apply to the nursing program. And the next application cycle that's opening requires that these lab sciences be completed between August 2016 and present. Uh, they do have a five-year shelf life on them. So if your lab sciences are outside of this shelf life, you're going to want to consider taking these courses at BC3 or another institution uh, to update those. We are able to use either high school lab sciences or college lab sciences uh, in our admissions requirements. So students that need to take a biology with a lab course, we do suggest that they consider the following courses at BC3 either Biology 1, Human Biology, or Anatomy and Physiology 1. But Anatomy and Physiology 1 is usually what I coach students to take because it's a required course for the nursing program. Uh, so therefore, it's very foundational, and you're kind of killing two birds with one stone is what I tell students because you're updating your biology with a lab as well as taking a required nursing course. So even high school students that have this biology with a lab within the last five years, if you're able to get anatomy and physiology one into your schedule at BC3, we do highly recommend that particular course as a starting point for a lot of our healthcare students. 
if a student does need a chemistry with a lab, if it falls outside of that window of August 2016 to present, we do suggest here at BC3 that a student take a course called Descriptive Chemistry. Uh, this is a chemistry for non-science majors, so it's not as difficult um, as taking Chemistry 1 or Organic Chemistry, but it does meet their application requirements. So that's where we usually see a lot of students enroll in this particular course. Uh, these courses are offered every semester at BC3. Uh, they are offered at our main campus, our BC3 of Brockway location, and our other BC3 locations. Uh, we also do have some uh, hybrid courses that are offered as well, where students may not have to come to campus as much. Uh, maybe they come to campus for a lab. So our credit schedule is available on our website, right on the main page, uh, bc3.edu. So if you want to see when these courses are being offered for the upcoming summer or fall semesters, that information is posted out there for you to view. Um, sometimes we do have folks on our information sessions that do have college level credits, uh, either from here at BC3 previously um, or from another college or university. So we do want to point out to students that AMP1, AMP2, and microbiology are part of the nursing curriculum and they all have a five year shelf life. So if a student had attended a previous institution and say it's been seven years since they have taken these courses, unfortunately, they do have to repeat them because we want those science courses to be as fresh in their mind as possible. We also do have some folks that um, have taken one section of anatomy and physiology at another college or university. And so when they're trying to transfer that credit in, we tell them that they do have to have AMP1 and AMP2 at the same institution for transfer purposes. They do have to also be passed with a C or better. And the reason for this uh, caveat is because AMP1 and AMP2 are taught differently content wise um, in the order of the content at different schools. So to ensure that we have everything that you need to be successful, those two uh, courses do have to come from the same institution. There are also a lot of opportunities for students to take coursework um, through various different um, third parties. One of those is Portage Learning Nursing ABC, but that's just one of the options that is out there. Unfortunately, we are not able to accept credits for the science courses from Portage Learning or Nursing ABC. So if there's ever any doubt in a student's mind as to whether or not we will accept a laboratory science, uh, please reach out to us before you sign up and pay for it. Uh, we would rather have that conversation on the front end of your application rather than have something happen down the road. Uh, so this is just a little bit about the lab sciences. Uh, again, we will accept high school or college level, and some high school students may question, well, I didn't have a separate lab period. As long as you had a lab embedded into your course content, uh, that is acceptable as well. So I have had high school seniors uh, reach out to me, and I'm always happy to guide and support that. But most of our high schools do have labs at least embedded in the science courses. Another thing to note for high school students, since I know we have a large population on our call tonight, is that your laboratory sciences do have to be completed for biology and chemistry by the end of your junior year in order to make application for the next application cycle that's forthcoming. So if you don't have a chemistry or biology and you wanna squeeze it into your senior year, unfortunately, that's gonna be a little bit too late. So we might have to talk about another timeline or plan. Our nursing program is a competitive program, uh, so there are oftentimes more applicants than spots available. Uh, so every year, you know, we have to tell students, unfortunately, there is not a seat available for you, and it breaks our heart to do that. Uh, so oftentimes people reach out to me and say, what can I do to ensure my best chance? And so we do give consideration to GPA, and as mentioned, that was a 2.8 or better. But we also look to see what type of coursework has the student taken? How many pre-nursing support courses do they have? What were their grades in their lab science courses? These are all the things that we look at when we're evaluating a nursing applica application. We separate applicants from high school and college. Uh, so high school applicants with no college credit, or I should say six or less college credits, 
are put into a separate application pool than college students that are bringing in college credits uh, with their nursing application. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that we're fair in this process, and this is the most fair way to do things. So a certain number of seats are allocated for each one of those application populations. We also develop a waiting list each year. So that waiting list is for that year only. And what the waiting list does, and it allows us to have the opportunity to reach out to a student and say, hey, a seat opened up another student did turned it down or decided to go elsewhere would you like it uh, so that waiting list is not an ever growing never ending waiting list we try to cap it at a certain amount of students and oftentimes we do turn to our waiting list to fill those seats so if a student's placed on the waiting list that is not always a bad thing so i always try to point that out to students as well uh, if they do get a notification that they were placed on it if they don't get a seat off the waiting list, they do have to apply that following year for another chance. So when it comes to determining GPA, there are a variety of different uh, scenarios. So it's really hard to get into each and every individual scenario um, in the time that we have together. So oftentimes I will have individual appointments with students to discuss this specific. If you don't have college credit, we do use your high school GPA. And again, that's through the end of a student's junior year if they're a high school senior applying, because we do the application review prior to when a student graduates from high school in May or June. If we have students that have attended multiple institutions and maybe they don't have 12 college credits at any of the institutions they have attended, uh, we can combine uh, GPAs in some cases and we do do that for students if it is to their benefit. If a student has more than 12 college level credits at their most recent institution of attendance, that is the GPA that we're going to use. So I also have had students that said, hey, I went to college right out of high school. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't do really well. And now I'm a totally different person than I was before. Is there anything that I can do to reset my GPA? I always say, come to BC3 take 12 credits of college level coursework specifically related to the nursing program um, and that will be the gpa that we utilize we consider everything through the end of the fall semester in this gpa for college students we also have returning bc3 students again that are recareering rethinking things um, so we do have an academic forgiveness program it is a one-time academic forgiveness and we do work with individual students when that applies to make sure that we can we can uh, make that work to their benefit we also have had students that may not qualify for academic forgiveness, but it's been more than five years since they've attended BC3. And so therefore, we just recently established a policy that if it has been more than five years since you've last attended and you start taking courses um, and take at least 12 new credits towards the nursing program to reestablish a GPA, we will use that as your ranking GPA for the program. So again, I realize this can be confusing and each individual situation is a little different so if you do have any questions, that's what the admissions office is here for, and I'd be happy to help you. All right, folks, it's time for another poll question. The question is, when do you intend to start classes? Summer session 2021, fall semester 2021, or are you unsure at this point? I am now closing the poll. And let me share it with everybody. Okay, it looks like some are planning to come about 26% for the summer session. Right now, about 17% that's uh, in our audience is planning to come in fall semester, and several are unsure, which is just fine. Okay, I will turn it back over to Morgan again. Thanks, Amy. 
Uh, so one of the things that I do talk to students about a little bit uh, in nursing information session uh, is that since we are an open admissions institution, we do have placement testing at the college. And this is not something that's just for nursing students. This is for students across the board. Uh, there are some ways that students can be exempt from placement testing. One of those ways is if you have had uh, college level math and or English with a C or better at either BC3 or another college or university. Uh, this also includes AP credits. We do have some high school students that do take AP English or AP math courses. And if you take the test and score three or better on the AP exam, we are able to utilize that as well because that is considered college level coursework. We also have uh, utilized SAT and ACT scores, and those do have to be within the last five years for us to consider them. We do have specific cutoff scores that we look at. Again, SAT and ACTs are not required to attend BC3, but we do find that some of our students do take that exam. So rather than put them through a placement test, we will look at those scores. So the cutoff scores are actually on our website. If you search placement testing, those scores come up and that will give you the most up-to-date information about our SAT and ACT score policies. Uh, we have been able to use high school transcripts this year. Uh, we'll continue that through fall of 21. Um, and that's pretty much because of the pandemic. We can't bring groups of students to BC3 campus locations now to placement test. I'm not sure if that will continue in the future, but if you are enrolling in either the summer or the fall of 2021, and you have a high school transcript that's within the last five years, we may be able to utilize your high school transcript for course placement. But if you do need to placement test, we do use a program called AccuPlacer, and that program does have tests in reading, writing, and math. So there are three sections. They are untimed, and you do get a second chance. So if you don't like your score the first time, we always offer students the opportunity for a retest. Once you've taken it a second time, however, that is the score that we do utilize moving forward. If a student tests into a developmental or a preparatory course, uh, that course does have to be completed prior to your nursing application being considered. Prep and developmental coursework, unfortunately, even though it does provide a foundation for you to move forward, um, are not included in your ranking GPA for the nursing program because they are institutional credits and they do not count towards the 12 credits needed to establish a GPA. So if you do test into developmental or prep course, the advisor that you work with will definitely make sure that you understand that, but I do mention that to students as well. So nothing to worry about yet um, if you haven't placement tested, uh, but something to tuck away and keep in the back of your mind moving forward. Some students do opt to come to BC3 as a general studies pre-nursing student, or they may enroll in our healthcare science program that's starting this fall. And what that allows them to do is to basically start taking courses towards application to the nursing program at any point in time. So there are a lot of courses that students can take in advance of starting the nursing program and the clinical based coursework. And we oftentimes suggest to students that they consider these courses because it is a lot to balance them alongside the nursing program coursework. So if you do need to reestablish your GPA, this is a great way to take those 12 credits ahead of time. Um, if you are a high school senior and you have some room in your class schedule, um, I know that we are offering a lot of college within the high school classes in our local high schools um, that do fall into this realm. Um, or you could always take uh, courses through our College Now program. Uh, we do have a specific person here at the college dedicated to um, high school students enrolling while they're still in high school. Her name's Erin Chaffee. So here are a list of just some of the courses that you can take in advance. Uh, there's college writing and speech, intermediate algebra, physical wellness, general psychology, human growth and development, and of course the anatomy and physiology classes one and two, and general microbiology. So there really is enough coursework to keep a student busy for a full academic year. And um, these courses do, you know, put some weight towards your application as well. So your success in these courses are important. You do have to achieve a C or better in all of these classes uh, to move forward because they are considered degree requirements. 
When our application is available, students oftentimes ask the question about the difference between our three-year curriculum plan and our two-year program. And so our nursing program is designed to be completed in two years. Uh, but oftentimes we have students that slow things down a little bit and do it over the course of three years, either as a pre-nursing student for their first year and then making application for the nursing program or as a high school student coming in under the three-year curriculum plan. The three-year curriculum plan really is designed to ease the transition from being a high school learner to a college student. I know I experienced transitions as I went from high school to college, uh, balancing time, learning how to study differently, all of that is incorporated. So if a student selects the three-year curriculum plan, that very first semester, they're, they're focusing on the same coursework that I just shared with you as the pre-nursing coursework, um, but there are no clinical classes in that first year. If they're successful in those courses, if they're in the three-year curriculum plan that first year, obtain a C or better, uh, make, maintain that 2.8 or better GPA, they do not need to reapply. They move right into the program in their second year and kind of fall into place with the clinical coursework. So the three-year curriculum plan really is designed for students either coming straight from high school into our program or for folks with less than six college credits. Uh, so even if you're a pre-nursing student and you're doing this over the course of three years, you're a two-year applicant if you've taken at least a semester of coursework here at BC3. So don't let that confuse you on the application. Again, the admissions office is always here to answer those questions. I know when we gave our, our poll, we did have some LPNs um, with us this evening. Uh, so we do have a specific program uh, kind of timeline uh, for our LPN students and they are called advanced standing students. So if you hear the term advanced standing, we're talking about LPN to RN. Uh, we do also have some transfer students from other nursing programs that fit this category as well. And so they do have a different application timeline that I'll share with you. And the very first semester of the nursing program is a little bit different for advanced standing students, LPN to RN. Instead of taking a nursing 101 clinical course, they take a course called Nursing 135, which is role transition to the nursing process. It is a three credit course and it's taught high as a hybrid. Uh, so this has been nice, I think, for LPNs because it allows them to kind of balance maybe working part time while they're doing this. Uh, we also require our LPNs to take a one credit entirely online Nursing 141 course, which is pharmacology for Nursing 1. So in their very first semester, these are the only nursing classes that they will take. So they'll have four credits of nursing coursework. And if they're successful in these four credits, they'll move forward in the spring semester and join the rest of the students for Nursing 102, which will be their first clinical course. The advanced standing program still is a total of four semesters with this semester included. Uh, so it doesn't actually expedite the program and make it any faster, but it does save students a little bit of money and relearning things that they already know from their PN programs. And so our advanced standing application actually is currently still open for fall of 21. It's the only nursing application that's still open at this point in time for fall of 21. And students do have to meet the same criteria as mentioned before with the lab sciences, the GPA, et cetera. But LPNs do also submit a copy of their um, LPN, their PN school transcript and their LPN license with their application. And we also do have to verify that they have clinical or work experience within the last year. So to give you a little bit of an idea of our timeline, our next application for general nursing students, so those that do not have any previous nursing uh, experience, aren't currently LPNs, will open on August 1st of 2021. We will actually close that application on October 29th this year, because that's a Friday, and this will be for a potential fall 22 start. So I think sometimes this trips people up that we work this far in advance to fill our seats for the nursing program. So we will have that application available on our website starting um, August 1st. And so it is a paper application that you do have to download and print at this time. And it's separate from the application for admission to the college. You don't have to necessarily fill out both applications. It just kind of depends on when you intend to enroll. Uh, so I do have those conversations with students as well. 
Our advanced standing application, like I said, is currently open. Uh, priority consideration is given to students that apply by next Friday, May 7th. And this would be for fall of 21. But we'll open that application again around the same time, March 1st of 2022 for a fall 2022 start. So that uh, the LPNs do apply a little bit later than the general applicants in the year. Any sort of academic requirements must be completed by summer of 2021 for current students that are applying for the advanced standing app, uh, application. It would be summer of 2022 for next year, but I will say that we do sometimes fill. And so if we have to go into the summer, it's on a, a space available basis at that point. For our general applicants, they have through the fall of 2021 to complete their biology, their chemistry, that 2.8 GPA, um, and again, high school seniors do have to have everything done by the end of their junior year. So they're a little bit different as well. We will arrange placement tests for students as necessary. Typically those placement tests occur for general applicants anywhere between like the mid October through November and even early December uh, for students that are applying as general applicants. Advanced standing applicants, we will work with them as needed as well to arrange placement testing. But we do meet as a committee typically in late May uh, for our advanced standing students, their LPNs, and then we meet in January for our general applicants. So students are notified and they are notified via their BC3 email address. So it's important for students to uh, start checking that email address as soon as they apply. We, we notify um, our advanced standing students usually in June and we notify our general applicants by mid-February. So February 15th usually is that magic date. And we will notify you regardless of our decision, whether you're in the program, you're on the wait list, or for whatever reason, if you're denied admission, we will let you know why so you can make corrections for the future. So that's a little bit about our application timeline. Um, we do have these dates out on our website as well. We do have them under our admissions page and healthcare admission. So if you do have to reference them at any point in time, you can see them there as well. Thank you, Morgan. Sounds like you have provided a comprehensive overview uh, for our potential applicants uh, who need to apply to our nursing program here at BC3. Remember, if you have any questions for Morgan, you may send your questions uh, at any time during the presentation by typing them into the question pane on the attendee control panel. All right, before I introduce our next uh, presenter, we have one last question for our audience. This is to make sure that you've been paying attention to what Morgan had to say. Which of the following is not a requirement of the nursing program at BC3? A 2.8 or higher cumulative minimum GPA, a chemistry with a lab passed with a C or higher, a medical terminology course, or the last option is a biology with a lab passed with a C or higher. Please select the appropriate response and hit submit. All right, I see that you guys have been listening. I'm gonna close the question and then let me share the results. All right, for those of you that answered the medical terminology course, you guys are correct. Um, for our nursing program, we do require the minimum of a 2.8 or higher cumulative GPA uh, to be uh, considered for the nursing program. Close the poll. All right, our next presenter, I'd like to introduce Dr. Patty Anir. She is the Dean of our Schaefer School of Nursing and Allied Health. She's been sitting here patiently during our presentation so far. So take it away, Patty. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, Morgan. That was a wonderful synopsis of the admissions um, portion of the nursing program. And thank you for all of our attendees for coming this evening. Um, I really look forward to sharing our components of the nursing program for you. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the nursing courses that you'll be taking. 
In the first semester, you would be taking our Nursing One course, which is an eight credit course, which focuses on the fundamentals of nursing. And we also have a pharmacology that accompanies that course. And you'll find that in every one of our nursing courses, there is a pharmacology that is also grouped with that so that we can kind of apply all of the medications to um, everything that you're learning in nursing. So in our second semester, the nursing uh, pro or the nursing course is nursing two, and that encompasses maternity, pediatrics, and med surg nursing. In our third semester, we have our nursing three course, which is also a nine credit course, and that encompasses some psychiatric nursing and our uh, medical surgical, more of an advanced medical surgical nursing. And then our last semester is again, a pharmacology course with an eight credit nursing course, which includes emergency, emergency medicine, critical care and advanced medical surgical nursing. Now, what's really neat about this semester is we also have a transition course. And in fact, we have students out there right now um, who are taking a three credit course. They must do 96 hours in a four week period. They are co-assigned with a mentor and gradually assume that mentor's um, clinical or patient schedule. So it really gives them that real feel for what nursing is. And our students are right now at this moment feeling like, wow, they're finally putting it together. So it's really exciting. And in fact, our I think our last day uh, for that program or that course is coming uh, on Sunday. So students are going 24 seven. Uh, right now, they go every shift and they match the schedule with their mentor. To coincide with our nursing courses, we have a lab component, which is where you learn the laboratory skills. You'll learn how to place an NG tube, how to place a catheter, how to dispense medications, how to do a sterile dressing, how to do trait care. We also have um, simulation at both the main campus and the Brockway campus. And that includes our Laridol simulation man and baby. And this is used to mimic a clinical situation in a non-threatening environment at the college. And actually you can see in our slide right now we have a student who is working on our sim man. Um, so she was working on a case scenario. I think she's right now, uh, looks like maybe taking a, a blood pressure. So um, kind of some really neat things that we can do to augment and facilitate um, our clinical. So speaking of clinical, we use many different clinical agencies, including our Butler Health System, uh, Armstrong, Allegheny General Hospital, Concordia, Penn Highlands, which is in the Dubois area for our Brockway students, and uh, some of our UPMC hospitals. Now, in order to be able to um, attend the clinicals, we have clinical affiliation agreements which identify clearances that must be uh, done and complete it uh, with our students. Some of those clearances include fingerprinting, drug testing, a uh, physical child abuse screening, um, you must have CPR. So these are all the different kinds of clinical expectations that are necessary in order to uh, be in that hospital environment. So indeed, some exciting news. 
we are going to be moving into our new Victor K. Phillips Nursing and Allied Health uh, building probably in the next couple of, of years. We are um, working with the architects and planning everything, and it is really going to be a neat building with all new simulation labs and classroom space and, and uh, skills labs. So really looking forward to being in that new building. Another exciting thing that we are in the planning process for is starting a, an, a licensed practical nursing program. It's our LPN program. It is right now at the state board and we are hoping to get approval. So we're working on that and hoping that in the fall of 22 or the spring of 22, uh, we would be um, excited to open that program. So again, still waiting for approval with that. As Morgan mentioned, we also are starting a healthcare science program to allow students to explore those supporting courses. Maybe you're, well, gee, maybe not sure, do I wanna be a nurse? Or maybe I wanna go into physical therapy or medical assisting. Um, we have a program that you can enroll in that gives you a taste of all the supporting courses so that when you're ready to make a decision, you can. Um, so some of the courses that are in that program include our chemistry, our anatomy, English, microbiology, so on and so forth. So really excited to share uh, that bit of information with you. Another very exciting uh, partnership that we have is with Concordia Lutheran Ministries. And as you can see from the slide, how it works is you must apply and be accepted into BC3's nursing program. And then you can apply for consideration into the Concordia cohort. And what that means is you will be able to attend the BC3 nursing program tuition free. Concordia will pay for the nursing program courses. That includes the nursing courses and the supporting courses um, with, of course, a passing grade. So not only will you have free tuition, you also will be guaranteed a job within the Concordia system. Um, and uh, as far as that sponsorship, you would be in that system for at least two to three, three years um, and uh, be able to work for them. And again, have that tuition free option. So really excited uh, that we've been partnering with our Concordia uh, family. So I believe Morgan mentioned a little bit about um, possibly going on for your BSN. You're able to do that and take that stepping stone uh, with BC3. We have uh, several degree completion partners, including Slippery Rock University, Grove City College, Waynesburg University, Chatham University, Lock Haven, and Carlow University. We call that a three plus one program. So you can take 80 to 90 credits at Butler County Community College and then take the remaining, which may uh, be about 30 or so at one of these campuses and you'll have a BSN. Thank you, Dr. Anir. We appreciate you explaining the expectations of being a nursing student at BC3 and the exciting news about our healthcare science program that's beginning in fall of 2021. We're looking forward to seeing the Victor K. Phillips Nursing and Allied Health Building on our main campus in the future. And of course, hearing more about the new and exciting LPN program that we may have in the future here at BC3. I'd like to remind you, if you have any additional questions for Dr. Anir, don't forget to type them into the question pane on the attendee control panel. 
Now we have reached the end of our presentation portion of the program. I would like to introduce and welcome Dr. Jill Martin Wren, our director of our BC3 at Brockway location as a panelist for the question and answer portion of our program. All right, we have a few questions from the from our audience and of course you can continue to answer or ask questions in our control panel. Uh, if we are not able to get to all the questions, we will definitely follow up with you uh, at the conclusion of our program today. All right, Amber asks, am I able to apply if I'm taking AP1 this summer? and AP2 this fall. So Amber, if you're taking AMP1 this summer and AMP2 in the fall at the college level and you pass those courses with a C or better, you are absolutely able to apply. You're actually in a, a, in a different place than most students uh, coming in that may only get in one of those before the application cycle closes. Uh, so as long as you have those two courses passed with a C or better, you're going to be in good shape. Just make sure that you do take a chemistry with a lab as well if you don't already have that. All right, another audience member has asked, can anatomy and physiology be taken online? And that's a good question too, and I might have to lean on some of my, my friends here on the panel. Um, anatomy and physiology is typically offered as a face-to-face -face course. Um, the lab component especially is important for students, I think, to be in the classroom. Now, obviously, COVID-19 kind of has thrown some of that for a loop uh, with some of our students that we had to move some courses to remote and online, but we are starting to phase back in to our, our fully face-to-face -face options for our laboratory science courses. So that may be a difficult course to get fully online. And Jill at Brockway, very similar, right? We offer it face to face at Brockway. As you mentioned with COVID, we did have a little bit of a hybrid model where lectures were done via go to meeting, but they came to the campus for labs. But for our schedule for fall, they are set up as completely face to face. You'll come Tuesday and have lecture, and then Thursday's lab, or you can pick a Monday and Wednesday to do lecture and lab. There may be some other courses that you can take in an online fashion, uh, a college writing, a speech, uh, a psychology class may be offered entirely online, but the lab sciences are a little bit more difficult to get fully online. All right, thank you panelists. Uh, I have a question here from Shauna. Does BC3 only offer the associate's degree and not the BSN? Patty, you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, yes, um, we only offer the associate degree program RN. Thank you. Uh, Amber is asking, what's the difference between pre-nursing and healthcare science? That is a really good question. I might pass that to one of the panelists, Patty or Amy. Do either one of you want to answer that? <laughs> I, I can answer it, or, or Amy, if you want to, that's fine, too. You go right ahead, Dr. Anir. All right. Okay. Well, I guess basically um, at this point, pre-nursing and healthcare science are very, very similar. Um, we don't actually have a pre-nursing program, okay? Um, it was a general um general education with the pre-nursing focus. So at this time, if you're interested in nursing or one of the healthcare programs at BC3, I would suggest getting into the healthcare science program um, as that will be the same component that was in the pre-nursing uh, 
component of the general uh, education. Absolutely, Dr. Anir, I would concur uh, that healthcare science program that was developed by Dr. Anir's uh, division is really the best place to, or best program to, if you're a new student applying to BC3, uh, that's the program I would absolutely select if you're interested primarily in nursing um, or PTA programs. And that actually is an associate degree program that you can graduate, uh, receive a degree, associate degree in, and then either apply to our nursing program, our PTA program, transfer on to another institution. Uh, maybe you're interested in sonography uh, at CCAC or uh, another school. Uh, definitely uh, the healthcare science program is a nice, strong program that's uh, new this fall. All right, Catherine has a question. She's a recent certified occupational therapist assistant from Penn State Du Bois. Mm -hmm. Could this degree meet advanced standing requirements? Great question. I'm sure there's a lot of overlap in the courses that you completed um, at Penn State uh, Du Bois. Uh, but unfortunately, advanced standing is only for students that are LPNs or they're transferring in from another nursing program. Um, so we would be happy to take a look at your transcript. Uh, sounds like you're closer to the Brockway area, perhaps, and, and Jill and her team work very closely with students in that area. And we'd be able to take a look at your transcript and see what credits would transfer over. Uh, but unfortunately, not eligible for advanced standing. You would have to apply when the general application opens again for fall of 22 to be starting with that. Thanks, Morgan. All right, this question is from Jessica, and she is asking Morgan, we need a little bit more clarification here. Um, are the academic requirements for the general applicants, must they be completed by fall 21? Does that mean the end of the fall semester? Okay, which is a good clarifying question as well. Um, so if a student is taking college credit, they do have through the end of the fall 21 semester to meet the application requirements. So even though the application deadline is at the end of October, we don't actually evaluate the applications until fall semester grades are posted. Uh, so students will have the fall, well, the summer and the fall technically to take their chemistry, their biology, get that 2.8 GPA. Um, and we will, the reason why we close our application in October is really to give us time to prepare uh, because we do have to make sure the files are complete, that we have all transcripts, uh, that students have placement testing complete if they need it. Uh, so really we start reviewing the applications after after our winter break when we come back in January. Uh, so you have the full fall semester to complete coursework. Um, and then the high school students, like I said, they're kind of on a different, a you know, little bit different. They do have to have theirs done by the end of the jun their junior year uh, because we will have those decisions made well before they graduate from high school. So chem and bio and the 2.8 do does have to really fall um, at the end of their junior year for high school applicants. Hopefully that answers that question. All right, great, Morgan. Thanks for that clarification. We're getting close to the seven o'clock hour. This is gonna be the last question. Like I said uh, before, we uh, will reach out to you uh, at the conclusion of this if your question was not answered uh, by the panelists on the live session. The last question is, um, Denny's asking, They've already taken AP1, college writing, uh, physical science, math, physical wellness. Uh, when would they be able to apply to the program? So the application for general applicants, I think that's where you call it. I'm not sure, Denny, um, if you do not have any previous nursing background or experience, you're not a current LPN, you would fall in that general application pool. Um, it sounds like you have a good number of our, our support classes underway. 
Uh, that application will open on August 1st of 2021, and you have the window of August 1st of 2021 uh, to October 29th to turn in your nursing application. Some students think the sooner they get it in, uh, the better their chances, but you have that whole window of time to apply. Uh, so take the time that you need with the application, but that would be the soonest on, uh, our next cycle would uh, open and allow a student to apply for a nursing program for a fall 22 start. All right, well, I'd like to thank uh, all the presenters today and thank the audience and all of you that have attended to our virtual nursing information session. I hope we've been able to answer most of your questions. Again, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a follow-up email with a link to view this recording uh, of today's webinar, as well as a link to the online application. Remember, you can apply for general admission to BC3 for free through Friday, April 30th by using the following waiver code, BC3 Bound 2021. On behalf of Butler County Community College and our panelists, I hope you all have the, a great rest of your evening and you stay dry. Bye, Thanks, everyone. everyone. Bye.